Welcome back. This is part two of the data logger series where I'm going to show you how to build a data logger with a SQL database. I'm going to assume that you've already watched the first video. That's where I created the base code that I'm going to use in this video, as well as installed the psutil package that I'm going to use to collect data on the Raspberry Pi. If you haven't seen that video, click the link above, then come back to watch this one. Here we go. I'm going to be using SQLite as the database for this project. It typically comes standard with new versions of Python. However, if you don't have it for some reason, you can install it with the package manager. Okay, let's get started. First, you'll need to make sure you install SQLite 3 if it isn't installed already. So type in sudo apt-git install SQLite 3. So it's telling me I have the most recent version already, so that's good. Before I begin to make some changes to my code, I need to set up a database and add some tables to it so I can actually insert the data I'm collecting. The command to open a database or to create a database in SQLite is the same. Navigate to the project library we used in video 1 and then type SQLite3 datalogger.db. Now what I've just done is opened up a database called datalogger in the SQLite command line interface. Because the database didn't exist, SQLite created it. If it had existed already, then it would have simply opened up the database. In SQLite, most of the housekeeping commands begin with a period. For example, dot help for help information, dot tables to show a list of tables, dot quit to close SQLite, and so on. For now, I need to create some tables, so I'm just going to start typing in some SQL code to do that. The first table I'm going to create is vMemory. And if you remember back to the last video where we saw the data types of the tuples that was returned, I'm going to use that information to tell SQLite what kinds of data I'm going to store in these tables. When you're typing a SQL statement in SQLite, you'll need to make sure that you end your statement with a semicolon so that SQLite knows that you're finished. And now I have a table. I can see a list of tables by typing in the dot tables command, and at this point, I only have one table. Next, let's create the CPU table in a similar fashion. Then if I run dot tables, I can see that I now have two tables, CPU and vMemory. If I run a simple select statement, I won't get any results because there's nothing in the table yet. Next, I'm going to adjust a few more settings real quick that are going to make it easier uh, when I eventually query the data. Okay, now that I have a database with tables, I can modify my CSV logger so that it works with a SQL database. I'm going to go back to the logger CSV pi file I was working in in the last video, and I'm going to save it as logger SQLite pi. Now, instead of importing CSV, I'm going to import SQLite 3. The collect data and print data methods are going to stay the same. I don't need to change anything else on those. The only method that I really need to change is log data. With that said, I'm going to change the doc string from CSV file to SQLite database. In the original CSV logger, I created a dictionary where the key was the file name and the value was the file data. I'm going to take a similar approach here where the key is the table name and the value is the table data. So going back down to the log data method, I'm going to change the file to table and then the rest of that row on the for loop looks okay. However, everything underneath will need to be changed. So the approach that I'm going to use is I'm going to create a count variable to count the number of parameters that I'm going to need in each insert statement. But before I finish that, let me explain what I mean. If you're familiar with using a cursor in SQL, you'll be familiar with the SQL statement where I'm substituting the values I want to insert with question marks, which are parameters. This allows the database to iterate over multiple insert statements without me having to hard code the values I want to insert into the SQL statement. So the question marks are placeholders for the values that I want to insert. However, the problem is that I'm working with multiple tables, so the number of values and thus question marks I'm inserting is going to be different for each table. So to fix this, I'm basically going to calculate the number of parameters I need for each insert depending on the number of values I read in the values variable. 
I'm always going to have at least one parameter, and then I'm going to add to that the number of total parameters I count, minus one, in order to get the commas right. What I forgot to do uh, first is create a connection to the database. I'm going to put that above the for loop because I need that to exist already when I start inserting records. With SQLite, this is fairly straightforward. If I was using another kind of database, instead of passing in the f file name, I would probably need to pass a username, password, database name, etc. as arguments inside this connect function. However, for SQLite, all I need to do is pass the database name. Okay, now that I've created the connection and the cursor, let's get back to the for loop. I'm going to use the cursor.execute method to run a SQL insert query. However, instead of hard coding the table name, I'm going to use fstring formatting to insert the name of the table I'm working with as I iterate over the data dictionary. Then I'm going to insert the parameters that I calculated in the line above. Then finally, I'm going to tell the execute method which values to substitute into the parameters when I run the query, and that's the data variable I created in my for loop. Next, I need to call the commit method to commit all of the changes that I made. If you don't do this, then all of the changes that you make won't be saved, so make sure you do that. Finally, I can move outside the loop and close the connection. And that's it. You can see that overall, I really didn't change that much code. I'm simply dumping the data into a different source, and instead of writing rows to a CSV file, I'm inserting rows into a database. All right, let's run this thing and see what we've got. Okay, so it looks like I made a few mistakes here uh, as I was coding. One, I forgot to insert the params into the F string, um, and it also looks like I made another mistake. I forgot to add a column to one of my tables, so it's, it's airing out. So I'm going to drop the table and recreate it, and then we should be good to go. Okay, let's try running that again. I'm now getting some output to the screen, so that's good. If I go back to my SQLite command line, I should be able to run a select query from that database and get some data back. So I'm going to run the select all from CPU. And that's good. I'm getting data from the CPU table. And if I run this query again, I can see that the table is updating in real time. Now let's check the vMemory table. That looks good as well. And that, my friends, is really all there is to it. I've used a SQLite database here, but you can use other databases with this. In fact, I'll post a link in the video description to a hobby project I'm working on where I use both a CSV logger and a database logger. So you can use both types of loggers in a project, and especially if you need to store some data temporarily before you load it, using both makes a lot of sense. If you liked this video, please smash that like button and check out some of these other videos. See you later.